Good morning everyone and welcome to another superhero story time. My name is Alice and I'm the project manager for children and young people here at Writing on the Wall and I am super excited to be bringing you another superhero story. This story is by the amazing Cheryl Martin. Cheryl Martin is a writer, a poet, a performer, a theatre director. She does everything and she writes brilliant stories. This story is called Celeste's Sparkly Cat and all of the stories that have been written as part of these superhero story times are going to be in our brand new book and this book has got diverse characters from all across Liverpool and beyond. All of the characters are young people and they're superheroes. Now maybe after you've listened to Cheryl's brilliant story, you might want to write a story about a pet that you have, or maybe about a pet you wish you had. What would happen if your cat or your tortoise just suddenly had magical powers? So maybe you'd like to write something after this. But before then, sit back and relax and listen to Cheryl's brilliant story. Hi. This story is called Celeste's Sparkly Cat, and it was written by me, Cheryl Martin. Celeste was new to Liverpool. She had a new house and a new school and a new cat. Her cat had lovely, thick, golden brown fur, almost the same color as Celeste's brownie gold skin. The cat had huge, almond-shaped green eyes, almost the same shape as Celeste's huge black eyes with gold bits in the sun. The cat woke Celeste up every morning by putting one delicate paw to the sleeping girl's cheek. The cat welcomed her back from school every day, curling itself around Celeste's legs as soon as she opened the front door. The cat would only eat when Celeste fed her and didn't even care that it was always dry cat food, because Celeste would always buy the very best dry cat food she could find, using all the money she earned doing chores around the house. And the cat slept at the bottom of Celeste's bed every night. But as soon as Celeste was well and truly asleep, the cat would go straight up to the window and jump out. When she woke Celeste up in the morning, her golden brown fur would sparkle as if she'd rolled all night in stardust. Now Celeste would see that star sparkle in the cat's fur and wonder how it got there and try to touch it. But as soon as her fingers reached for the cat's shining fur, the stardust would disappear like breath on a mirror. Celeste tried to tell her mother about the stardust, but her mother had two jobs and was in too much of a hurry and too busy to believe in stardust. You never saw any such thing. Don't be silly. Sometimes Celeste's mom had a voice like a bus door closing in your face after you ran all the way down the street to catch it. Why don't you give that animal a name? Celeste wanted to say, how can I find a name as beautiful as stardust glowing in the morning sun? But she didn't say it. She was scared her mother would just make fun of her again. Better yet, why don't you go get some real friends? You'll never learn how to talk to people if you spend all your time with that no-name cat. Celeste's mom gave the cat a long, hard stare like she was adding up all the vet's bills and deciding they were pretty high. Celeste's mom always meant to give the cat away and save all that money. But when she looked into the cat's green-gold eyes, she never could. But Celeste didn't know that. So she grabbed the cat and ran up to her room and kept the door locked until she heard her mother leave for her second job. The cat rubbed against Celeste's tummy. The cat always knew when Celeste was upset, 
and Celeste was very scared. Scared her mother would decide to take the cat away for your own good. She worried herself until she couldn't eat the meal her mother had left for her in the fridge. That night, Celeste tried hard to sleep, but couldn't. So she was half awake when the cat padded up to the window and jumped. Celeste, terrified the cat would be hurt, ran to the window, but she didn't see the cat anywhere. And when the cat jumped back in, right onto the bed, Celeste was so surprised, she almost forgot to keep breathing. The same thing happened the next night. But on the third night, Celeste decided she'd jump right after the cat, no matter what. Now, if you're reading this or listening to this, you must never, ever jump out of a window after a cat because you'll fall and you might not get back up. But in case you hadn't guessed already, Celeste's cat was magic. When Celeste jumped after the cat, she didn't land on a roof or on the street. She landed in a moonlight garden with silver roses and midnight blue sapphire grapes glistening on the vine. The grass was gold and green, but soft as silk to walk on. And the cat wasn't a cat, not anymore. It was a woman with skin the exact same brownie gold as Celeste's, and eyes the same almond shape, same black, with gold bits in that moonshine. In fact, she looked an awful lot like Celeste's mum, but with silver shining afro hair and a bright sapphire and silver necklace like lace or frost through a window. Celeste didn't know what was going on. Who are you? Instead of answering, the woman kissed Celeste delicately on the cheek. Celeste recognized that touch. The woman nodded. How can you be my cat? Celeste was really scared now. Oh my God, I'm dead. I fell out the window and I'm dead. No. The woman's voice had a deep, slightly purring sound. I'd never let anything bad happen to you, though you were pretty silly to follow me. The woman sat down on the soft silken grass. She spread her golden dress out and patted a corner. Celeste slowly sat on the dress, which rippled under her. It felt like when the cat would rub against her legs. Celeste was totally confused. Don't you remember me from the old country? I used to sing you to sleep when you were a baby. Celeste finally recognized those eyes, huge, black, gold bits in the moonlight, exactly like hers, exactly like her mother's. Gran? Celeste's own eyes filled with tears. But you were old, and you were so small. Things change. Celeste and her grandmother talked all night. Her grandmother took her back to her bedroom and sang her to sleep. And in the morning, the cat woke her up as always with a loving, delicate, touch of her paw. Celeste never tried to tell her mother about the moonlight garden. She never jumped after the cat again. In fact, she never remembered seeing her grandmother or the silver roses. You see, Celeste scared her grandmother when she jumped after the cat right out the window like that. So the next day when Celeste got home from school, Instead of just curling around Celeste's legs like always, the grandmother strolled down the road. Celeste, surprised, followed her. She followed her cat 
right into a neighbor's pretty front garden with roses and almost hidden vines covered with dark, ripe, midnight blue grapes. And a little girl called Jo, who became Celeste's best friend forever, even when they grew up and had kids of their own. And Celeste finally gave that cat a name, Sapphire. When Celeste's mom heard Celeste call the cat that, she nearly jumped out of her skin. Sapphire was the secret name she used to call her own mother, but only in her head, only in her dreams, and no one ever knew. The cat curled around Celeste's mum's legs and purred, looking into the cat's green-gold eyes. For a second, Celeste's mum thought she saw the reflection of a sapphire and silver necklace, like lace or frost on a window. The one she had in a jewelry box upstairs that she would one day give Celeste, that Celeste would one day give her own little girl a daughter with huge almond-shaped black eyes with gold bits in the sun or the moonlight and brownie gold skin soft as silk. And that's the end.